In this video, I'm going to be flashing the LilyGo T-Watch S3 with Ghost DSP. The reason why I wanted to cover this specific device is that, as you're going to see, there's some nuances to getting this watch into bootloader mode. Personally, I found conflicting instructions online, and I didn't want anyone else to fall into the same pit holes that I did. This device is an open source watch with an ESP32-S3 chip. It's considered more for development and testing than some kind of out-of-the-box Apple Watch competitor, so bear that in mind. The other thing you should be mindful of is that the battery is absolutely terrible on this. I flashed it with a mesh-tastic image first, and the, I only got about an hour of battery life. The watch actually performs better with the Ghost ESP image. I clocked about two to three hours of battery time with it on, but it'll probably get better in the future. Uh, in the alpha version of code I'm on today, the screen randomly turns on every 30 to 60 seconds, but that seems like something the developer is going to fix in later versions. So let's jump into it. First thing before we begin is you want to make sure that the watch is turned off by pressing the button on the side of the watch, the, the little dial. Um, if you press down for long enough, the screen completely goes off and the watch is off. You're going to need tweezers or a really small flathead screwdriver for the next step. On the back of the watch, there's a little hinge in the corner that's hard to see without good lighting and maybe a magnifying glass. We're going to need to insert the flathead or tweezers into that to pop off the back of the watch. After you have it open, you'll have to move the battery out of the way. It's soldered in there, so you can't completely disconnect it, so don't pull too hard. The other thing that I've seen in conflicting instructions online is that you're instructed to unscrew the little plastic casing inside to get it into bootloader mode. Don't do that. As you'll see, you don't need to unscrew anything for this. So under where the battery was is the most obnoxiously small button that's hard to press and see. This button needs to be held down while you plug the watch into the micro USB connected to your computer, so it takes a little bit of coordination. Uh, it's pretty easy to slip on this tiny little button and you usually need something like your tweezers or your flathead screwdriver to hold it down. So let's go ahead and get this thing connected. If you've succeeded, your computer should ding that a new device was connected, but the display should still be off on the watch. If so, you've succeeded in connecting the watch in bootloader mode, and we can move on to our next step of flashing the SP. Spooky, the creator of Ghost ESP, made it really easy to flash the firmware on our ESP devices. You'll want to open up Chrome, since Firefox doesn't support web serial, and navigate to flasher.spookytools.com. From the first drop-down, choose your ESP type, which for the T-Watch is the ESP32-S3. From the custom board drop-down, we'll pick LilyGo T-Watch. Then press Flash. You'll have to pick which serial port your T-Watch is connected to and then click Connect. If it gets to the part where it says Bootloader Offset Set to Zero, that means it's connected successfully and starting to flash the device. It's going to take a few moments, so please be patient. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video just to get to the end here so you don't have to wait for a few minutes while it does the flashing. After the serial port is closed, you can unplug the watch from the micro USB and turn it on. Ghost DSP should come up right away. Besides the UI on the watch face, there's also a web UI to configure the settings for Ghost DSP. Let's jump over to that really quickly. Over here on my computer, I'm going to pull up my SSIDs and look for a secure SSID named GhostNet. The password for that SSID is going to be the same as the SSID itself, and it is case sensitive, so make sure to capitalize the G and the N. Once you connect to the SSID, pull up a browser and navigate to ghostesp.local, and you should be able to get to the web UI of the device. So Talking Sasquatch recently did a good video demoing a lot of the Ghost ESP features and configurations on the web UI. So instead of trying to demo every feature, I'm going to give a quick description of the settings and link his video in the description if you'd like to see a deeper demo than this. So right on top, we can set the time zone for our device. If the device has a GPS chip, we can also define the receiving pin. The GPS chip is helpful with the war driving feature of Ghost ESP. The broadcast speed is self-explanatory. 
it wants the speed at which broadcasts are sent, and I wouldn't change this from the default. We can also set the accent color for the web UI here. Scrolling down, we can configure an SSID and password to have our device connect to. Below that, we can configure our evil portal. This is actually pretty interesting. We can catch and redirect a certain URL if we wanted to, such as facebook.com, and redirect them to an evil portal page that looks just like the Facebook login page. We can connect this evil portal to the internet while creating our own SSID that users connect to. The idea is that if they connect to our SSID, they still have internet access, but when they try to connect to Facebook, they get redirected to our evil portal and asked to log in. From there, we can harvest the Facebook credentials. Further down, we can configure printer settings after we get on a network and force the printer to print whatever we want, which could be fun. Below that is the RGB settings. This is for boards that have LEDs on it, and you can get creative with some settings here. If you want to be on the Flappy Ghost Leadership Board, that's the built-in game on the Ghost ASP, you can configure what name you want to have on the high scoreboard. On the Help tab, we have a list of all the commands we can use in the command line of GoCSP, so if we wanted to enable certain features or set certain, certain settings, we can do so there as well. Since GoCSP works on ESP32 boards that don't have displays, this is how you would turn on or off a feature for those devices. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and I hope this was helpful to you.